everybody. Welcome back to the Cabral Concept. So great to have you here today. Today's episode is Topical Cures for Cold Sores. Episode is 2763. I'll be giving you lots, about seven different actual real world cures that can help with cold sores. But as I mentioned that, I want to share with you, I have a previous podcast, episode 760, on what to do internally for herpes, shingles, and other viruses as well. So again, that will be everything I will link up to make it easy for you today will be at stephencabral.com slash 2763. That's where all the show notes will be, the three big takeaways, and much more. And then I'll, I will also link up the protocol which I developed a couple years back for that virus that was going around the globe. So we've got a few different ones. We've got a viral-based protocol for herpes shingles, and then we have another one for general overall immunity. I always have to share with you on the show. Can't provide you with any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, or medical diagnosis in any way. I'm here to share with you how to help with natural-based health remedies that have actually been proven to work, and also looking for underlying root cause imbalances, right? So we're looking at it internally. I can share with you a bunch of different nutritional supplements, as well as staying away from high stress, uh, other particular issues like high arginine foods as well that can exacerbate herpes and cold sores. So what I'm going to give you today, though, is a, is a little over a half a dozen different remedies that people have used that I've seen work in my own practice and that I want to pass on to you. All right. So the first two are going to be a little stronger in nature and a little less natural. So I just want to share that with you up front. They're not my go-to. They are not recommendations that I use in my practice, but I would feel that it didn't serve you in the right way if I didn't give you things that actually do work for certain individuals. The first one is acetone. Now, I know that you may think of it as a nail polish remover, right, or a paint remover, and I don't disagree with you. That's literally what it can be used for. It's also produced in small amounts in the body or in large amounts if the body is producing ketones, since acetone is actually one of the stronger uh, ketones that are actually produced. So it has some nature to it. However, it's definitely not natural when you're applying it to your lip. That's why it's not my go-to. But again, I just want to share with you that people do use it and they put it on, they dab it on a Q-tip and they dab it on their cold sore and they seem to get results. So I just want to share that with you. Decide what you may as to how you want to proceed. I'm going to give you the more natural ones in just a moment. The next one is hydrogen peroxide. Again, not exactly natural, but certainly is created inside of the body in its own way. And you can use it in a topical form to dab to a cold sore. It also has antimicrobial uh, benefits as well. So if they're, you know, I, again, I can't talk about infections, things like that, but it may help with something like that. Okay. So those are the two, not necessarily natural ones, but certainly, you know, produced in the body and, and they are, uh, to an extent natural, right? All right, but let's go first tier natural. What have I seen used in my practice that is natural and that actually does really work. The first one is d dabbing apple cider vinegar on the cold sore. Now, again, this can sting and it can burn, and I know that a cold sore may already sting and burn and itch already, but this is used basically as a pH toner. So uh, apple cider vinegar, vinegar is actually low pH, it's acidic when uh, put in the mouth or digestive tract or on the skin, but actually as it moves through the body, digestion-wise, it becomes more alkaline. Uh, and again, I don't want to get into the acid-alkaline balance right now. That's not for the show, but we're actually talking about could it be helpful with uh, cold sores? The answer is yes, absolutely. All right, so you would apply that first. Next up then, you would apply a topical vitamin C. So there are many topical vitamin C's that you can add. The purer, the better. Most of them just come as L-ascorbic acid. And you would use that in its liquid-based form. You would dab that on. Vitamin C, we know, is a powerful immune booster as well. Uh, it's also a detoxifier and an antioxidant too. And the last part to this would actually be applying L-lysine. L-lysine, an amino acid, is, is a kryptonite for viruses, and herpes viruses especially. So if we're getting multiplication of the actual virus, uh, this is gonna be helpful. It's helpful internally at one, two to three grams per day, and it's also helpful externally applied as a topical-based ointment. They even sell, uh, which is, I think, fantastic, 
uh, grape seed extract combined with L-lysine in a stick that can be applied to the lip for cold sores, and that can be really helpful. Okay, so I just wanted to share that with you. Those are my three go-to as topical besides working internally. Now, second tier, which I don't use typically in my practice, but some people do, so I wanted to bring that to you as well. The first one is zinc oxide, like zinc oxide that you use as a natural suntan lotion. People apply zinc oxide to a cold sore even after the doing the things that I just spoke about uh, when they're home because it's going to be white, it's going to be chalky, right? Or it's going to be like a paste uh, and you can apply that right over that cold sore. So it might be something you apply overnight, might be something you apply when you're just in your home or if you don't care, you can get head out and you've got you know that white zinc oxide over the lip. Okay, so the next one is myrrh oil. I have personally not used myrrh oil in my practice, but I know many people have, and they've gotten great results with this particular essential oil or oil. So myrrh oil, you can check that out. I, I'll talk about that in just one moment, why I can't link to them. And the last part is if you need something soothing, a lot of people will apply after they've done their certain steps. This is not necessarily to heal, but an aloe vera gel can be very soothing for burning or itching or inflammation in the area, okay? So those are the big remedies that are used. I wanna give you just a couple of takeaways for these. The ideal methodology for using them, if you were to stack them, would be strongest first, most cleansing first. So acetone or hydrogen peroxide, if you're gonna use one of those, don't use both, but if you're gonna use one, use one. Next up, would actually be the apple cider vinegar. Always try to get the raw apple cider vinegar if you can with what's called the mother. And uh, I typically just use Bragg's as a brand name. After that, you can apply the liquid vitamin C, okay? So these are all basically go on wet. They, they allow them to dry in between, put them on. And the next one would be the L-lysine stick that you could use. And that could be topical application as well. Now, besides that, if you wanted to use the zinc oxide of the myrrh oil, they would go on last or the aloe vera would go on last. All right. So hopefully that's helpful in the order. I also want to let you know that I cannot link up any of these products because when you're ever, you're talking about a particular medical or health-based issue, you cannot link up nutritional supplements in any way, shape, or form. So I can't do that. But I know that you'll be able to go out there and you'll be able to find an L-lysine stick or an apple cider vinegar or a liquid vitamin C or zinc oxide or myrrh oil, uh, any of those you'll be able to see and uh, you'll be able to find. And of course, hydrogen peroxide can be found at your, your local drugstore as well. So all of these, again, have been proven to work in my practice. They've been proven to work in the scientific literature as well. And many people have used them as well uh, in their own life and they've written in and they've talked about how much and how helpful they've been. So hopefully today's show was helpful. What I want you to do is if you can head on over to stephencabral.com slash 760 now after this show. And the reason is then you'll learn what to do internally in addition to externally, which I just gave you as the topical based cures. Please let me know if there's any questions. And as always, if the show was helpful, do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, buddy. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.